Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Gray Area. My name is Alex, and today we have UK producer DJ Chapter and Verse in the house. What's up, man? How are you? Good evening. Evening. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Evening, evening there. Not so much here. I just woke up like two hours ago. Yeah, it's quarter past five now. I had a full day of it. This is like overtime for me. So, <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, I got it. Are you getting paid overtime for this? No, hey, I'll, be, I'll be asking Red Light for some more money. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should tell them to put it on your tab, man. <laughs> so, um, thanks for taking the time out to talk to me today. Um, let's get into it. I'm just going to ask you a few questions, and then we're going to get into it. Okay, ready. Let's go. All right. So I always like to start by like finding out what what an artist was doing when they were a kid. Like I feel like your parents have a lot to do with your musical your musical taste when you're a kid. And <laughs> then you kind of move into what you want to listen to. So as a child, what were you listening to? What were your parents listening to and how that influenced you? Well, believe it or not, my my, my dad, my old man listened to Pavarotti, uh, you know, that kind of, and a bit of rock music, a bit of Dire Straits, a bit of, you know, uh, the kind of 70s, 70s music, really. My mum was a, like a kind of amateur singer, so she was always belting out West End musicals, etc. I love so, that. <laughs> it, yeah, it was all right once or twice, uh, you know, a year, but every day got a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you know all the words to various musicals? Every West End, every West End, Le Miserable, Guys and Dolls, Cats, I know them all, man. I might do some bootlegs. <laughs> a Le Mis bootleg is, is on the Le way? Mis, Le Mis bootleg, yeah, let's, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love to hear it. And then when you started getting into your, your own musical taste, like, what yeah. was that like? I remember the first two tunes that I ever mixed together were on a, on a set of my friend's 1210s in, like, the year 2000, almost. Yeah, 2000 was... Uh, Tiesto, Adagio for strings, and uh, for an angel, Paul Van Dyke. Yes, I was a big trance kid at the time. <laughs> yeah, and if you listen to the music that I kind of do now, there's a lot of trance influences in there. So, you know, I kind of blame, I kind of blame that if it's a thing to blame. Hey, I mean, it's funny how even influences you had 20 years ago somehow seep their way into your music even now. Yeah, I mean, I'm a firm believer that everything comes back round. If you listen to a lot of things that are out now. You know, a lot of the old is now the new. Uh, and I believe that if people have liked it before, they'll like it again. In oh, 100%. In particular stuff that's, you know, based on feels, you know, like trance music, melodic music. And that's why I've seen a lot of, you know, especially at the moment, a lot of people doing, you know, melodic mixed with um, tech house, trance mixed with tech house, you know, right. whether it's Fred again, whether it's West End, whether it's uh, Skrillex, you know, they're all, if you listen to what they're actually doing, they're actually mixing melodic or trance with tech house, you know? Right, you... right, right. I mean, I always like to say that um, the people who call it melodic house or melodic techno are full of themselves. It's it's okay to say it's trance, guys. We're yeah, fine with it. I, yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff that, that I do, I, when I start doing it, I, I expect it to go a certain way. It then goes a different way. And I think there's a lot of cross boundaries in, in dance music in particular mine I think there's a lot of, of boundaries which are crossed all the time you know what I mean I don't someone says to me what are you making what is lights go out what is ashes well I don't know what it is really what is it it's dance hey. music but I mean that's that. okay it's okay to be unclassifiable because you know at this point we've been you know dance music has been around for 40 years like the cross pollination is is going to happen just because there's so much of it and everybody's listening to everything it's just it's just how it goes, and I love to see it. I listened to one of John Summit's sets a few weeks ago, and he was playing, you know, and such a variation of things, and everyone loved it. So, like, what I'm trying to do in my sets is do things what are not normal. I'm trying to get away from just playing bootleg, 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 and try and play some things which are kind of mixing genres and bringing things back to people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, and I feel like varied sets where people can feel the highs and lows and they're getting a little taste of everything – is the way to go because you're you're pulling all of these emotions out of people too at the same time. Like people love to hear something recognizable and then something they've never heard before, and then something that gives them a sense of nostalgia. And maybe something that'll make them cry a little bit. What I try to do is I'll try to play one or two things that I've done myself that yeah. are that, that are notable that people know. You know, know whether it's we are your friends, whether it's um, 
I pumped up kicks or something, and then I tried to put something every third song or, you know, that's completely different, <laughs> you know, that they yeah. don't know. You. And then I'm just trying it out, you know, I'm just trying it. But, you know, if I played Lights Go Out as the first song, it probably wouldn't be as effective as it would be as I played it as a last song, you know? <laughs> 100%. Well, I mean, because then what, what, then what do we have people have to look forward to? Like, what are they going to wait? What are they waiting for? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and the, the, the problem is when you're trying to like introduce new music, it's took me quite a long, I feel like it took me quite a long time in terms of the amount of releases that I've done mm-hmm. to get people to, to, to listen to chapter and verse just because it is a quite a distinctive new sound. Right. You well, know, let's, and... let's talk about how you got there though. Um, cause I, it's, it's great that you bring that up because before you were a producer, you were kind of a professional partier. Um, <laughs> and like, yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've read some things. I've seen some things. You, you've, you were, you were, you were going to Ibiza like every year, you know, you, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, how did you, I mean, how'd you initially fall in love with dance music in the first place? And then how did you get to the point where for like you cross over from fan to like, I want to, I want to do this for a living or I want to do this at least as a hobby that's going to turn into a living someday. Well, I remember, I remember, I, I, like, like you say, I've done a few parties in my time. <laughs> but I remember, distinctively, probably five years ago, I went to a place called Leeds, which is not far from me. I went to a Bibby show and then an Elro show very close to, to, you know, to the same time. And it kind of reignited the passion that I've had over it. Mm. All, over all my life for either singing. I used to sing in musicals when I was younger, um, acting, you know, it, it reignited the passion I had for art, you yeah. know. And so, like, from that, I then went to watch Clooney, who I knew mm. from, uh, all my friends are friends with him, I knew him from Sheffield, which is where I'm from. And I kind of, like, thought, this is wicked. And then a few of my friends were like, oh, come to Ibiza, you come backstage with us. And I was looking at what they were doing, I was thinking, I would love to do this, you know? That's so funny that you got into it. I mean, it seems like late in life, because a lot of people decide, I mean, at least nowadays, people decide they want to be a producer or, or a DJ, like when they're like 16 or 17. Yeah. Um, what was it like deciding this like later on in life, possibly I after think, you had already had like a day job for, for yeah, years? And shit? I, th- I, th- I think it is a lot more difficult when you are older hmm. to, to try and break through the barriers and break through the gatekeepers. However, like, I've always, not, I've not really looked at everybody else. I've looked at what I'm doing myself. So I will look at something and say, right, you know, I want to achieve this, you mm. know. And I, from the very beginning, I always, I always knew what I wanted to do. And, and I always believed that I'd do it in myself. Right. And I, the odds were against me in terms of like, you know, if you've got groups of people that are in cliques and all that, I'm not really like that. I don't really operate like that. I do it myself. So by hook or by crook, the way I go is the way I'm going to go. You yeah, know? I'm not. I'm not gonna kind of. I'm not gonna kind of move the the things that I do and change my ways to belong in to fit into some kind of group. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's that served you well because you you signed your first release in 2020, yeah. um, and it's not just that you signed your first release in 2020. It's only been two years since that happened, or three years since that happened. But I love the story of how you managed to get your first release signed. Um, I was like looking through your Twitter. And you can you talk can you talk about that? Can you talk yeah, about well, how you did this? Well, what happened is my my, my this was my idea, right? I'll I'll start making music. I'll release loads of music. I'll get some good shows. Yeah, yeah. That was the plan, right? I'll release five or six tunes. I'll I'll make them good, uh, and uh, you know I'll learn how to do it all. I'll learn how to DJ. Believe it or not, I I learned to DJ. This this story is actually better than the the, the signed one. I yeah. learned to DJ because my friend was running running a, a night in Sheffield about three and a half years ago. Yeah. And he was a producer on the lineup, yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. Said, I told, I made up that I was a DJ. <laughs> right? I made it up, right? I could yeah. not touch, I'd never touched a controller before. I touched a set of 12 tens a few times. I'd never touched a controller, so I made it up. That was three weeks before I played with Medusa, right? Holy so shit. I went, so I went to Bob DJ and I got a controller. I think it was DDJ. 900 or a thousand whatever and i learned to dj dj to, to, some will disagree but i learned to dj to a, to a stage where i can mix two songs together right in about three hours right i then i then did that every single day for 21 days until i played with medusa what so hold I on you're I telling me that this this video i saw way way back on your instagram of you playing with medusa you had only actually been a dj 
for like three weeks at that point? I'm going to be up three weeks before then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's both fucking outstanding and absolutely <laughs> crazy, but totally, it, it seems on brand though, because the speed at which you've been able to like get on some of these like crazy labels that you've, you've signed to like realm and solo toku hell deep and all this, but also like managed to sign a publishing deal in the, it with ultra in the span of two weeks, it just tracks. Cause you sure you learned to DJ in three weeks and open for Medusa. And then you dropped your first track in 2020. And then now you've signed a publishing deal with one of the biggest dance music labels in the world. Like, I mean, I mean, I think, I think it's about the commitment and the desire to want to do it. I mean, I work, I have worked and I, and I still do work every day from seven in the morning till 12 at night, every day, it's something to do with music. Yeah. Instagram, whether, you know, when I'm doing my tour stuff, I've done it all myself till now. So every, every time I go away, I'd book all my flights myself. I do all my, I do all my, you know, all my arrangements myself, you know, I, I'm, I'm with red light management now, but I haven't been I've right. got to the, all my Instagram and all and everything there. I've done it all myself. I've watched every single follower of those 60 odd thousand Every single one I've watched them follow me. Every single one, and it's a and it's a question of commitment and a question of being. You know, I, I am I, I'm so committed and so focused on achieving that I yeah. will do what I've got to do. You know, so I consistently work on music, and when you're surrounded by it all the time, eventually something's got to give. <laughs> oh no, absolutely! I completely I completely <laughs> agree to, with you. And you've got um, to move forward. Yeah, eventually, it's, a, it's a, for me. It's a numbers game. And, and someone once told me when I first started, they said, look, the only way you're going to do this is if you, is if you throw the kitchen sink at it, you know, is, is if you really, really go for it. And that's how I am. And that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so. And it's worked out for you. And, you know, I, it's crazy that you say you've watched every single one of those followers. Because I feel like one of your biggest things is like this. You interact a lot. Yeah. Like you interact a lot with Pete, not, you know, with everybody like i see you on instagram all over the place and you're like liking and i say no it's you that's doing it it's not like i can tell that it's you that's doing that interaction I, I'm, really, I, I'm really genuine with it because i genuinely believe that that that'll pull the people look the, there's a lot of people trying to do it and it and, and it is and it's very rare that someone's going to do it but there are those people and if i can and if I can give some encouragement to a hundred people and it pulls up four or five and makes them successful, then that's great. Why not? It takes me time. It doesn't cost me a penny. It takes me time, you know, and, and also that also gives you, that gives me an amazing amount of satisfaction that I reply to people. I, I, I get messages back from people from two years ago when I sent out 20 messages a day saying, sorry, bro, I missed this message. Let's do a, <laughs> let's do a track together. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I mean, you know, you've had a lot of like crazy stories that have come about from like just social media. Isn't that how you signed your first release to Big Beat? Well, well, the 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 the, the, the one from earlier about dreams. What I actually did is I I thought right, people are telling me you're going to have to, you know, you're never going to get stuff signed. Everybody told me when I started doing it that I was crazy that I'd never do it, which is good because help me, you know. Yeah. But when I when I when I signed dreams, I literally. I went, I went to label base and I copied and pasted every single email just on label base, every single one. And I sent it out to every single, I must send it out to 10, 20,000 labels, honestly. And then How long did, did that take you? Ages. And then what I did is I picked out the best label, which at the time, Angelo Ferreira's mood funk. I thought, you know what? He's with Defected. I might be able to get him where Defected. And, you know. Right. And, you know, and, and, and I know he's good on track source and I can get, and what I've done with labels over the period of time is I've just, I've you I've, I've kind of utilized the labels and the label fan bases to grow my own fan base. Well, I mean, and that's let's be honest, that's the best thing. Like everybody could self-release if they wanted to and put all of their music out. But the yeah. advantage to releasing through a label and a good one is that they're already gonna have an existing fan base that's yeah. going to become part of your fan base in the end. Like that's yeah. the best thing. They have the resources to help you out, and all the best labels actually do that for you. I mean, I, I spread I spread my bets. I, you know, I release a lot of music, but I spread my bets. So I'll say, right, if I release that on Solitoko, it might do something, it might not. You know, Solitoko is a great label. Everything I've put on Solitoko has always done something. But some labels, however big they may be, whether it's a major or not, might do nothing. That's so it's the best, 100%. The best way I found it to do is to book a release every three weeks, and then you're edging your bets. And even if you have one out of three that does something, at least you've got something that's there all the time. And yeah, when you're in people's faces so much like I am. Eventually, someone's got to give. People so, are going to go. I got. 
So you're releasing if you're releasing a track every three weeks and you release like fifty tracks in a year, like yeah. how are you how are you even managing to keep up? I mean, I produce too, but I I can I probably I can probably I like at the rate I'm going, I can make a track every two weeks. How are you releasing a track every three weeks? Well, I, well, last year I released twenty nine tracks. Yeah, and, the, and and I toured all year. And you, so, so that means you're writing music while you're touring too. I'm doing everything. I'm, I, the, 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 the amount of stuff that I do is a lot. But I am very fast and I'm very efficient. I'm very focused and I see it as a challenge. You know, I'm willing to put the work in and that's what you've got to do in this game. You've got to be willing to work. People think you, you can just come here and pop out of nowhere. And it does happen, you know. You can pop out of nowhere. You can, you can drop onto a sample and it happens a lot. Yeah. And you can, you can come out of nowhere, but that's very rare. The, the, the way I'm doing it, I feel, is a, is a sustainable way to, to, to grow and to keep growing. I've never moved backwards in my, my career ever. I, I always try to move forward every single day, doing something, doing so. Oh, I still send out demos every day. That's every it. Day, I, well, every day I send demos out. Every day. And I always, and I, and I still get loads of no's. And so I try harder and I try harder and I try harder. And eventually them no's turn to yeses until, until, until eventually the labels come to you. And you're getting to the point now where labels are coming to you. But how have you been able to, up until this point, and this is something for just like a good like good note for producers that are coming up. Like, how have you been able to deal with all of the no's in anticipation of the one yes? I like it. I like it. We, if I didn't get all the no's, I wouldn't be able. They make me better. You know, the labels mm. to me make me better. I don't look at it as you know. Somebody. What I used to do is I used to get a label that said no, and I go, I go on. You know, uh, you bastard. You know, like how can you say no? And I'd be like, but the way I look at it now over time is. If it's not right for them, it's not right for them. That's fine. You know, it, there is there, there, a lot of labels. It doesn't really matter about the music. It matters about the sound that you've engineered for yourself right. and the profile that you've got. I understand that. What I try to do is I try, my, my, profi my profile is really genuine. My Instagram is really real. And I try to do that on purpose because I try to make it about the music, you know, not about some you know not about some goofy tiktok or not about some you know and I, but i believe that is more sustainable than having one or two or three songs which bounce on tiktok and yeah. i believe you're more investable as an artist if you've got uh, you know and you're more sustainable as an artist if you continue to progress your music and you, you know rather than trying to have one it and follow it with another hit another you know you know absolutely I mean? well i mean and i think that definitely comes through on your on your socials is that you are definitely all about the music um and it's it's genuine, and that's 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 hugely commendable because there's a lot of people out there that have great music, and yeah. then they have a social media persona that's yeah. that may be detached from who they actually are as a person. And I feel like you you come across the same way as you come across right now. Like I didn't expect anything anything <laughs> other than the person who's sitting in front of me. You know I mean, what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, the funniest thing about the music industry is this: when you get to a sound like I have, you can hear something, you go right that chapter and verse. How do you then progress whilst keeping that sound without the sound going dead? You right. know, you've kind right, of right. Try and progress somehow without changing the sound completely. So that is the hardest thing. You're finding the balance. So when you when you've got a head like mine, which is like right, one minute I'll be doing some tech house, then some future rave, then some trance, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to push the chapter and verse, you know, to get better and move forward with time without losing chapter and verse it's really difficult you know, I bet. That producers really struggle with that now well you were saying that when you're talking about labels you're talking about you know kind of living off of the nose now and having that be being a driver um and now that you have your own label i know you've mostly used it to self-release yeah but do you have plans to kind of pay it forward to, yeah. to new producers and 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 kind of you know Sit yourself in the position where you know you can say no, but also say yes to a lot of people. Say yes to some people. Yeah, I mean the the, the the label I made, I created as a kind of, I kind of created it because people said, kept saying no to me, so I thought, right, I'll just do it myself. How hard can it be? But, <laughs> but at that point, I then started getting a lot of offers and stuff. So I made the label really just to set it for when for when it's time. I looked at no someone like Noizu. I looked at you know I looked at. Uh, Sunny and I thought, right, they've all got labels. I need a label. So the label really has just been made to create, you know, it's there. You know, the brand is yeah. not right. Everything's not right. The distributor's not really right. You know, but I have made it. It's ready to go. As soon as I get time, and as you can appreciate, with the amount of releases. Yeah, that, you don't have a lot of that. The amount of shows <laughs> that I do. 
And yeah. And a lot of stuff that you don't know I also do as well. <laughs> I haven't really got time to do the label yet, but that will come. I expect probably the later part of this year, uh, I'm going to sit down with Label Works and Red Light and get the label sorted and get the branding right because I want I want to give people the best chance that there is, you know, uh, you know, on the on the label. I don't want to take, you know, stuff off them and then you know not do anything. You know, I understand some people are taking a month to write a track. It's very really precious to them, you know. I've, yeah. I've signed things to labels and they've took them and never spoke to me again. Release them and I've not heard one thing, you know. Right. So yeah, I don't I want that. I, I, I will only I will, I will only put my label out when I'm ready and when the label is ready and it's ready for everybody else as well. And you know, I don't, I don't want to put it out unless it's proper, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. One thing I'm hearing too, is that it sounds like you want to be able to create a relationship with the people that you work with too. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, I look at some of the labels like Repop, for example, you know, the, 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 like for, for Lee, that's been really successful and it brings people through, you know, like Joshua, like John Summit, you know, that's, that would be, that's a massive achievement. If you can do that and help people like that, then great. Yeah. You know, then, then you're making money as well by not doing a lot, you know, once right. your structure is sorted and you're also helping people as well. You know what I mean? You're helping the artists through. You yeah, know? no, hundred percent. I'd that's love to great. see that. And that's great. I'd love you, to just see meant, that. you were just saying about the, the, the one, the uh, big beat record. That's yeah. Story. So the big beat record, I had a dream. And this is the true story, which is crazy, really. I had a dream about Neil Armstrong on the moon and so, so much to do with space. The day after I made that track and uh, about an hour after I made it, Big Beat randomly sent me a DM, random, and said, have you got any, have you got any tracks about space? And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck. And I was like, what the fuck, right? That's, that's, a, that's fucking beautiful, man. That's a true story. And then I went for a walk in the woods around the back of my house, right? Yeah. And I looked on the floor, and I swear, this is the truth. I looked on the floor, and there was a packet of Space Raiders, yeah? Crisps. Yeah, right? yeah. And a little green alien on, yeah? What the fuck? Three days later, I got the artwork, and it was a little green alien. Exactly the same as on the packet of crisps. <laughs> Whoa. That's and amazing, the, man. The true story, and that is a true story. What a testament to, like, the way your career has gone. Like, <laughs> just... All like literally being in the right place at the right time, like all of the time. It's like that's this so shit's just I mean, lining up. It's so random, but that's like that's one of the things that's happened to me, and, that, and things like that make me, you know, make me make me think that this is supposed to be. Do you know? <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely. No. There's, you know, you've made a lot of this happen, but you know that's why it's supposed to be too, because you're you're pushing it. You're like really dedicated to this, and you're like yeah, you're I'm, making you're I'm making that shit happen. Never going to stop. As far as I'm concerned, I've. I've not even scratched the surface of what I can do yet. That's how I feel. You know, I'm always trying every day. I'm trying every day, every day, every day. I've got hundreds of demos, hundreds, you know, and I'm going to keep trying until I do it. <laughs> I love to hear it. Um, I always, one thing I want to ask you before I ask my last question is um, you've had so much industry support since day one, but who are you following right now that's on the come up that you think is like going to be the next thing or even just people that you find like fascinating and interesting and are making great music. I mean, the thing with me is I, what I've always done is I've always been on, I've always been hammering DMS and stuff. So I've always been to people like Joel Corey, who, who yeah. I, know, I know really well. Um, you know, like Gordo, I've always been to them, always been bang at them all the time, sending them stuff. And I, and I, I, I what I would touch people is never be afraid to, 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 to send people stuff. Don't be af afraid to, to DM. I reply to every single DM that I get, every single one, irrespective of who it is. You know, I reply to every single one, but I've never been scared to do it. I thought, you know what, what have I got to lose? You know? Right, that's you know, true. I'm, you know, at the moment, the biggest ones for me, I mean, Dom Doll is already up, up, up but it, for me, he's only just scratched the surface. He will, it, I think he'll go absolutely crazy soon, Dom Dollar. You know, I think... Yeah. Obvious, the obvious one, Mal, that Mal, Mal P, Morris West. Morris, yes. I've known, I, I, I've spoke to Morris for a while. You know, he's doing great. You know, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that have, what I do think is that it's hard now because there's so many artists and it's so easy to make loops and, you know, and, and release a bootleg song that it's really, really hard. And a lot of artists are telling me that they're finding it hard to get demos heard. Yeah. You know, yep, that's true. Get them open. So what you need to do is just keep going and keep going and keep going. And then, you know, that's the only thing. That's the only, you know, that's the only thing. You know, Hugo as well. Hugo's a good friend of mine. Hugo's killing it. He's, well, 
I, I, I said this with uh, on my on a podcast with Emma with uh, Emma Capote is that he for me in the last year he was my favorite artist of the year that his music yeah, is just you know what? I, I spent a bit of time with him he's a, such a great guy you know and I, I know a lot of these people and 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 the, it's like Hugo works really hard man but he, yeah you know the thing about Hugo he's got such a, such a good great personality that that people love him. And if people love him, that's why he gets where he gets to. He's moved to Miami. He's got into a group of people and people love him. And that's why he's going to get somewhere because he does it for yeah. the love. I mean, he does it for the money as well, but and the Latinas, <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but, 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 you know, but like I said, there's so many people that are doing so well. I mean, I'm just looking here like Joshua, like James Ives has slain the world. Like James is a great guy. I know James really well. I know Joshua really well. Josh is killing it as well. You know, who's coming up? It's difficult to say because there's so many, so many people, you know, so many. I mean, it's a, it's a dense, it's a dense, dense market. There's a lot. I mean, and that's a good thing too, because I mean, there's lots of opportunities for everybody to come up, but it also means we're getting a lot of fantastic music right now. You know what I don't, what I'd always say, and this is why I, you know, I look at other people. Of course, I look at people who are doing better than me, and I think I wish I were doing that well. But I don't want to be anybody else, and I don't want to, you know, be yourself. And do what you're going to do yourself and follow what you're doing in your own path. The minute you start to try to copy, you know, it's like me, you know, if you, if I, I tomorrow got hold of all Adam Bayer's followers, yeah. you know, and stuck them on my Instagram, they're not going to like me. You know, if tomorrow <laughs> he got all my followers, yep. you know, they're not going to, well, they might like him. <laughs> That's a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what I was going to so say. I mean, you're, you are you, you do you, people will like you. And just because you like other people doesn't mean they're going to like you any less. And that's what I've always thought. You know, that's that's that was that was fucking poetic, man. Nicely said. <laughs> a poet as well, mate. A poet as well as, a poet as, well as massive sweet eater. Ah, that's Sweet-y what it is. Sweets all day. <laughs> those are the those are keeping you alive. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, I always like to. To, to close things out before the speed rounds with uh with this question what excites you about the future of dance music you know i see a lot of cross boundaries i see a lot of um I, 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 it, it's difficult now now to see where it's going to be in three or four years but what i think yeah. is going to happen is it's all going to go full circle melodic melodic's going to become more mainstream trance is going to become more mainstream i think or a version of so what right. I'm looking forward to is the stuff that was big at the time, breakbeat, trance, you know, even the harder stuff, the stuff that you're starting to hear for like Patrick Topping and those guys. I think that's all going to come back around again. And that's what I'm looking forward to, you know, because I loved it. I, I loved love it, that. You know? Yeah. And I mean, for somebody who's been at this, you've been you've been listening to this music for, for a long time. You talked about mixing two records together in 2000. And that's right around when I first started going to parties. Like, that's when I first started listening to dance music, 99, 2000. Yeah. For somebody like, like people like us, it's amazing to see all of this stuff come first, full circle. To, to be like, oh, wow, Melodic's back. Oh, wow. I can see Breakbeat starting to, like, seep its way back into the conversation. This is great. Like... You know, let's keep this going forever. You know, the golden era of trance. I think trance music will come back and I start to try and do a bit myself, you know, but you know, let's see what happens. I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot a lot of this music for me, some of it is quite simple and it will have its day, you know, whereas I think the more melodic feel stuff, you can't argue with the heart. And that's what that's why I think melodic um and kind of trance will always play a part in the dance music. You know, fantastic. Yeah, that's absolutely true. All right, so we're gonna hop into a speed round. Are you ready for some real <laughs> quick questions? They're all real don't random too. Me, don't talk me up. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What was your first thought this morning? My what? Your first thought this morning? 1998. All right. <laughs> <laughs> finery, finery. There it is. Would you rather never hear your favorite song again or be forced to play your least favorite song in every set that you play forever? I never hear my song again. That's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather only be able to whisper or only be able to shout? <laughs> Good one. What do you think? <laughs> I, I'm thinking that's a shout for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite food to eat on tour? Um, well, I was at McDonald's because it's the only thing in America that's quite, you know, consistent. <laughs> yes, this is true. This is true. Um, what's the ultimate hangover meal? 
Um, probably um, a, a curry, a, 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 like a Chinese mixture, like a Chinese curry, some noodles, some rice, some prawn crackers, some ribs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so everything? <laughs> All of Chinese menu, yeah. <laughs> um, if you look, if I looked at your recently played tunes on Spotify, what would you want to hide? Um, Venga Boys, oh. <laughs> and how many times have you listened to the Venga Boys recently? 11 today because I'm listening to that little donk they're using, and I might use it myself. I might try and bring the Venga Boys some Euro pop back at some point. <laughs> oh, I love this. Um, if you weren't a musician, what would you be? Uh, a lollipop man. Oh. <laughs> Do you have lollipop? <laughs> what the Do fuck is a lollipop America? man? America. No. They just, they just help. They get a little lollipop. They stand in the road and they help people across the road. This is a this is a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool job, easy <laughs> job. Yeah, that's what I want to be. Oh my god, I, that is that I that is not a thing we have. <laughs> I'll, but, I'll, send you a, I'll send you a job description in a bit when I fully finish. <laughs> I would love to see that. Um, what sound or noise do you love? Um, um, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot. Um, cheering. Ah, yeah. Cheer it is. That's a good one. <laughs> I love it. What's worse? Random people who you haven't spoken to in years hitting you up for guest lists? Or a hangnail? A what? A hangnail. What's a hangnail? You know, when you get a little piece of like skin hanging off of your finger right here, yeah. that that that's real painful. And every time you touch it, it hurts. And every time you, you like know, put your you hand know, in your pocket, it hurts. Don't forget this from, from years ago. Do you know what I do? What? Give them that guest list. Ask what them. a lovely person. Ask them on that guest list, and I go, you have a lovely night. <laughs> you were the first person to ever say that, and I why commend not? you, sir. Why not? You are not. You have a lovely night courtesy of me because you can't do it. So you have a great night. <laughs> I love that. You you fantastic human, you. <laughs> <laughs> and then last question. Finish this sentence. House music is? Life. Yes. My life. Every day. Every day. Every hour just about I wake up. That's it. That's my life at the moment. And it will continue to be so until I get fed up of it. I love it. But yeah. Awesome. Well, that's all I have for you, man. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for taking the time out to speak to me today. This was fun. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Well, I'll be talking to you soon. And again, thank you. Thank you, bro. All right. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.